Today we're going to look at the evolution of the Bugatti, right from a 1937 Type 57C Adelante Coupe all the way to a 1994 EB10 SS. It's a complete study from the sublime to the ridiculous. The lines of the original Bugatti speak of pure Art Deco. Now the lines of this car are early Le Mans car, or at least early in terms of the 1990s, but with the ridiculous V12 engine with not two but four turbochargers, completely nuts. Well, now, actually not really. When you think about it, eight cylinder, supercharged, root supercharger, twin cam. You know, it has a lineage right from day one, basically Bugatti built race cars. It truly did, and by the time they started getting into the Atlante, the road between the Monoposto race car and the road-going car began to fork, at least according to our writer at the time. But we could stand around here and talk about these cars all day. When you have an opportunity to drive them, you need to drive them. There's a view. You know, it occurs to me that I'm always driving the high-performance stuff, and this is a remarkable automobile. I suggest that we trade places. What do you think? <laughs> why? Because he's got a Tweety Bird ass, and I've got a manly body. That's why. <laughs> okay, let's do the swap. <laughs> When we're doing this car, he'd get that silly Italian accent. And you know why they call it this a car, an EB110, is because Il Torre Bugatti always gave 110%. Well, that's not the real reason. The real reason they call this the EB110 is because it was introduced in Paris exactly 110 years after Il Torre Bugatti was, was born. The car is just the most amazing car when you look at the specs. Think about this. The car has 60 valves. 12 cylinders, four turbochargers, is all-wheel drive with a six-speed gearbox. The SS makes over 600 horsepower, makes 450 foot-pounds of torque at super low RPM, and will do 219 miles an hour. Well, enough about the horsepower, what about the chassis? A typical carbon fiber monocoque with aluminum skin wrap over it? Oh yeah, real typical. Actually, it was so complicated, they actually had an aircraft company build the chassis on this car. Once you step on the pedal and you hear those turbos spooling up, incredible car. In 1934, when the whole Type 57 project began, it was headed up by Jean Bugatti. Now, around that time, they started racing monoposto or single city race cars. So the Type 57 project was all about distinguishing the difference between a racing car and a road going car. Now, although the Le Mans winning cars that Bugatti built in the late 30s were largely built on 57 components, they were sprung much heavier and had much more heavy-duty driveline components than the original road-going cars. Now these Jean Bugatti tank-style bodies began to get more streamlined and it was sort of an intuitive streamlined situation. In other words, if it looked fast, then it was fast. And nobody could dispute that a Type 57 absolutely looks fast. one of the most drivable supercars that I have ever driven. It does everything it should. Maybe it's because it's the all-wheel drive. It just feels like you can't get into trouble with this car. And like I said, when Tom says, you need a car like this, absolutely not. Am I ever glad, though, Tom didn't fit in this car this time? Now, this car has been restored. The car looks fantastic, and it presents that way as well. The body panels are absolutely infallible, but the restoration of the engine is really the standout on this car. When you get inside of it, the hides, the carpet, and the headliner are perfect. The inside, the dash, looks like your grandmother's dining room table right after she hit it with the lemon oil. The instrumentation is beautiful. I love chronometric gauges. 
Every single switch works, every single gauge and dial is operational. Not only are the throttle and the Peter absolutely beautiful, but they're calibrated as if they run a switch watch. Did I say Peter? Of course I meant retard. The wheels are beautiful. The aluminum discs in behind them are actually drums, full-size drums, and when you drive the car, the car actually slows down. You can modulate the brake pedal. Now you take all of this, the beautiful restoration, and add the fact that it is a class winner at Pebble Beach, and this thing's gotta be worth a million dollars real money. If you want it as bad as I do, maybe even more.